today we're going to talk about representable functors. Representable functors are particularly well-behaved kind of functors that give us all sorts of useful things afterwards. One thing that we're going to be talking about is the Yonet dilemma, which tells us about natural transformations between ordinary functors and representable functors. Another thing that we get out of this is a very nice way of sort of decomposing all pre-sheaves canonically into representables. So the representables are particularly well behaved. We can build up other functors from them. But first, let's see what the representable functors are. So let's fix ourselves a category. Then there are two kinds of representable functors. There's the covariant ones and the contravariant ones. And so we have, given any object, given any object A in C, we have the following representable functors. We have the representables They're usually notated with an H, and then there's a terrible difficulty of getting your upper and lower script right. Lower script A, subscript A, usually means that this is a contravariant functor, so it's going to go from C op to set. And what does it do? It's going to take any other object in C, let's say X, and it's going to send it to the home set. So it's the set of set of morphisms from X to A. So C has to be um, locally small to do this. And because X is in the first component here, this is this is op because it's op in the first component. Uh, we'll see that a bit more in a second. Sometimes the only way to be really sure that you've got your ops and things going the right way, if you're worried about it, is simply to write out all the morphisms. Then you simply can't get it wrong. So let's see what a morphism does here and see if we got it right. So if we take a morphism from x to y, let's call it f, this has to go somewhere over here. Now what can it possibly do? It's got to be a morphism. We, we think it's op, so it's got to be a morphism from the set of things, it's got to be a function from the set of morphisms from y to a. So this has to go from here. Now we've got a slight notational problem, but this is kind of what the function is that we're ending up at. It's got to go to the set of morphisms from x to a, right? Because this is our functor applied to x, and this, applied to y, sorry, and this is our functor applied to x, right? And so what this morphism is, you could call it h sub a of f, but what does it do? How can we take any morphism that goes from y to a, turn it into a morphism that goes from x to a using this one here? So supposing we're given some morphism here, in here, let's call it um, S, that goes from Y to A. Now you see why you can get confused, there are just too many morphisms lying around. But let's just draw it up here. If you start with a morphism from Y to A, called S, how could you possibly turn it into a morphism from X to A? Oh, you could pre-compose it by this morphism from X to Y that we fixed. So that's exactly what we do. This is in fact pre-composition. So what we get is S composed with F. So we can write this as this function as blank composed with F. And because we're writing our composition in this order, the F lands up looking like it's on the right when it's actually acting on the left-hand component. So we are correct that this is contravariant because we started with a morphism from X to Y and we produced ourselves a morphism in the opposite direction from H A of Y to H A of X. So this is the contravariant representable at A. Of course, there's a covariant one as well, which we write by an upper script, a superscript. So H upper A, it's now contravariant, which means that instead of being having X in the first component of the whole thing, it's going to be in the second component. So this is a set of morphisms from A to X. And now, if we take a morphism from X to Y over here, where is it going to go? Well, it has to go from H upper A of X to H upper A 
of y. This is c from a to x. This is c from a to y. So now we're saying, OK, if we take a morphism from a to x now, so this helpful diagram isn't going to help anymore. We're going to take a morphism from a to x. Let's call that s. And work out how we can possibly turn it into a morphism from A to Y, given F. Oh, well, there's only one possible thing we could do. And that is post-compose by F. So here we're starting with something from A to X called S. And it is going to be sent to uh, uh, F composed with S. So this is post-composition. You could write that as F composed with blank, and it's the factor H upper A applied to the morphism F. So that's the other, that's the other representable. Now, of course, there's one of these for every object A, but you might ask yourself whether that in itself is a functor. That is, the, is there a functor that sends an object A to this functor? And there is, and that's called the Yoneda embedding. So let's just recap what I just said. Given any A in C, we have a functor H sub A, which is in the functor category. So it's a pre sheaf on C, it's in the functor category, functors from C of to set. And so we can ask ourselves, ask, is this, does this extend to a functor? Does this extend to a functor from C to C of set? And the answer is yes. So on objects, we saw it's going to send A to the functor H, lower A. So what's it possibly going to do if we take a morphism F from A to B? Where can it possibly go? Well, it's got to take ourselves to a morphism from H A to H B. But what are these? These are functors, right? So this has to be a natural transformation. This is going to be written H sub F, and it is a natural transformation. As a natural transformation, it has to have some components. So what are its components going to be? It needs a component at every object of C. So the component at X in C, so we've got to have H sub F, has to have a component at x which takes us from this functor applied to x to this functor applied to x. But what are those? Now I feel like I've run out of space, so I'm going to go up here. We're trying to go from h sub a applied to x to h sub b applied to x. Right, but this is the morphisms in C from, and this is contravariant in X, so the X is going over here, from X to A, and this is the morphisms in B, in, in C, from X to B. So this component has to be a function from this home set to this home set. And what's it possibly going to be? How can we start with a morphism from X to A and produce a morphism from X to B? We start with a morphism from X to A. How are we going to produce a morphism from X to B? Ah, by post-composition with our original function morphism that we had here. Right. So this is going to be post-composition. It's again, it's going to send S to F composed with S. So it's going to be F blank. And next time what we'll do is we'll show that this really is a natural transformation. 